you, Dr. West, for the opportunity, really my first opportunity, to present in this forum. Hopefully everyone can see my first slide at this point. As Dr. West mentioned, Dr. Guerin and I will each present, I think, about a half dozen presentations from the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting that was held last month. Dr. Guerin is going to focus, I think, primarily on new and emerging treatments for lung cancer. My presentation is really going to focus on efforts to improve existing treatments for lung cancer with a specific focus on stage 3 and 4 disease. By way of disclosures, I receive research funding from a number of industry, foundation, and government sources. I've also recently served on compensated advisory boards for Berenger Engelheim, Genentech, and Geron. And I receive royalties or editorial fees from the American Society of Clinical Oncology, Clinical Decision Support, and Oxford University Press. I've organized my presentation into three sections. The first section is going to focus on stage 3 or locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer. And first, I'll look at an abstract dealing with optimizing radiation doses for this disease. Then an abstract looking at combining immunotherapy, specifically a vaccine, with chemoradiation. And a third abstract looking at the role of radiation in neoadjuvant or preoperative therapy for stage 3 disease. The second section is going to focus on stage 4 non-small cell lung cancer and will include about three abstracts focusing on maintenance therapy and another abstract looking at predictive biomarkers. And finally, I'm going to discuss the less common small cell lung cancer, reviewing an abstract on maintenance therapy for that disease. So before I review the first set of abstracts, I think it's worth reviewing what stage 3 or locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer is. Features of a lung cancer that commonly make it stage 3 disease could be a supraclavicular lymph node, say above the clavicle or collarbone, a large unresectable primary tumor, and perhaps most commonly, the involvement of lymph nodes in the mediastinum or the space in the chest between the two lungs. Making a diagnosis of stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer can be pretty challenging. So when you think about lymph node involvement for locally advanced head and neck cancer, these are lymph nodes that a patient or a physician can feel or palpate in the neck. For breast cancer, you can feel them under the arm in the area we call the axilla. But these mediastinal lymph nodes aren't anything that a physician or a patient could feel on examination because they're in the middle of the chest. And even the radiographic assessment of these lymph nodes can be challenging. So you can have lymph nodes that are enlarged on a CAT scan or light up on a PET scan, but still may not have cancer in them. And conversely, sometimes you can have lymph nodes in the mediastinum that are normal size, don't light up on PET scan, but when you biopsy them, there still is cancer. And finally, once we have a diagnosis of stage 3 disease, we're still dealing with a very heterogeneous set of patients. So someone who's got a small peripheral tumor, but it's when it's resected, there's microscopic cancer in one of these lymph nodes, that's stage 3 disease. But so is someone with a very large central mass and multiple levels of mediastinal lymph node involvement. All of them are really given the same stage at presentation. Stage 3 lung cancer is quite common, and it accounts for over 40% of all non-small cell lung cancer cases. And unfortunately, outcomes remain poor for this disease, with five-year survival rates generally under 20%. The treatment of stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer is highly controversial, and I think you could argue that perhaps it's the most controversial area in all of lung cancer management. In general, I think it's believed that treatment for stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer should entail at least two of the following, surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy. Which of these modalities should be given? Well, I think most experts would tell you that at least one of them should be chemotherapy. So another way to think about this is that when you're treating stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer, you need at least one local treatment, 
which would be surgery or radiation, and one systemic treatment, which is chemotherapy. In which order should these be given? Well, that is a very open question, although it appears that we know that when it comes to chemotherapy and radiation, giving them concurrently or at the same time is probably giving them one after the other or sequentially. What type of surgery, radiation or chemotherapy, is best? Again, all of these are active questions. Currently in the United States, the most common treatment paradigms you're going to see for stage 3 lung cancer are probably either concurrent chemoradiation or surgery followed by chemotherapy after resection. And further adding to the clinical uncertainty here is that stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer clinical trials are very difficult to conduct. You need to coordinate researchers and clinicians from multiple disciplines, surgical thoracic oncology, radiation oncology, and medical oncology. Patients often drop out during the study because of toxicities, and it can be very difficult to assess your treatment effect because when you give thoracic radiation, about two-thirds of patients have changes on their CAT scan afterward due to the treatment that could be confused with disease progression. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Grace Casts, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support.